Hey, good morning, guys. It is 10.40 a.m. Uh, got a little bit of a late start today. We got home around uh, 9.30 a.m. from our little adventure yesterday, so got one thing that I'm gonna complete today, and it's a big thing. Check this out. So I ordered this off of Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description as always. This is a C60 um, solid state solar charge controller. So this is made by Xantrex. Same people that made my uh, inverter that I like quite a bit. And um, this is a C60, 60 amp controller. The panels will be putting out 50 amps max at 24 volts. This has a bunch of dip switches and dials and jumpers and stuff that you got to set up before you connect everything to it. And it's got a heat sink at the top to dissipate heat from uh, uh, charging the batteries and whatnot. So I have to sit down and read this manual because there's a bunch of settings that I have to go through and do on this. I will share that with you guys when I figure out exactly what it is. Your setup may be different because I'm running, remember I'm running the Walmart Deep Cycle two year warranty batteries um, and there's gonna be a specific setting that needs to happen for those. So let me sit down do some reading and I'll get back to you and then we'll get to the install. All right guys, I sat down and read through the book. This is actually a pretty simple setup. Um, let me see if I can point this out to you. There's three jumpers on here um, that you have to set. There's an equalization mode which the default setting is manual and all that is is a, it's a desulfation mode that you can manually activate to desulfate the batteries um, and keep them at optimum levels. Uh, it takes about an hour to do that uh, with the solar plugged in but uh, I'm just going to leave that on manual and we're using this as a charge controller so the pin will stay on the charge control. Um, that reset switch there is for the equalization mode and then we're running at 24 volts so I move the jumper to 24 volts now here's where the um, bulk and float Let's see if I get this here so here's your bulk setting and here's your float setting and then if you look at the uh, instruction book here what I have is a maintenance free RV and marine battery so the bulk volts should be set at 14.4 volts DC and the float volts should be at 13.4 volts DC and let me see if we go back in the book here hang on I'll come back okay this is for setting the um, charge control mode which is what we're using this for and remember on the back page there we had a, a setting of 14.4 uh, volts for bulk and then if you look at the comparable setting for uh, 24 volts you see it's at 28.8 so we're going to spin the little dial here don't know if you're going to be able to see this but we want to go to 28.8 which is two clicks so one two see the little arrow on there I know it's really hard to see okay and then um, for our float charge remember they wanted you at oh what the heck was it it's, uh, 13.4 volts DC so the float charge is actually set from the factory a little bit too high so we need to go halfway between um, 13.5 and 13.3 which on here would be what 26.8 so this little dial here we're just going to set it right about halfway there. So those that's all you need to do for the voltage setups. These um, telephone looking connections here, um, one of them is for the battery temperature monitor. 
right here. And then I think this is the CMR, which is the control module, which I ordered one of those and I ordered one of these. So when those get here, we'll install them. Something I found funny is this company, um, Xantrex, it's kind of funny they put stuff like this on their circuit board so when you open it up you see it. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, I think that's it. I'm going to head back out to the shelter now and start getting this configured on the wall and uh, ready to install and make the connections. One other thing I forgot to mention is you guys are probably concerned about you know how's the alternator going to react since I'm using the batteries for both the truck and for our house batteries. Um, this unit, I specifically bought it because it's all solid state. What happens is if it, sense, if it senses voltage that's higher than the uh, float charge, and remember that's 13.4 volts or higher, it just disconnects. So it'll disconnect the whole charging system from the circuit when it senses that the truck starts up and the alternator is running. I know somebody is probably going to ask a question about that, so I figured I'd cover it, but that's what will end up happening when the truck turns on. It's a very smart system. I bought this because it's simple. I don't have to go through and do a bunch of settings via the computer, and it's very basic, and I wanted something simple like that. Plus, it was inexpensive. This was 166 bucks shipped, so you can't go wrong there.
All right, guys. It's about uh, eight bazillion degrees up there on the rooftop, making up that box, but I got it done. Um, just a little rundown of what's going on here. So we've got our eight four coming in. Half of the wires are going into the positive side through a. They say that you should just use a switch, but this is what I'm going to do: use a disconnect as a switch, and then the other half goes in and hits the ground for the PV right here and then you've got ground for the batteries which is ran down here to here and that is tied into the battery bank under the truck right there at that junction point we've got positive from the PV or the solar panels coming off of this breaker here going in and then this is the battery positive which I ran down here and tied in to this disconnect right here that's a 24 volt side so no, none of the breakers are on yet um, I'm gonna do some voltage tests to make sure I hooked everything up right and then uh, as luck would have it we're gonna turn everything on and then watch everything burst into flames because that's my favorite part all right guys I turned all the breakers back on and check this out this is the battery side so remember how we set the dial indicators to charge at 28.8 volts that's the bulk charge and then if we look at the uh, photovoltaic side the panels are putting out 31.4 volts and we've got a status indicator blinking. Let's count it here. One, two, three, four, five. So if we look at our little chart here, green bl blink means that it's charge control mode. Green solid means the batteries are fully charged. And then we're gonna look, I'm gonna go to the page in the book that shows uh, why it's blinking five times. Okay, if we look at the chart here in the instruction book, you can see five blinks means it's at the bulk setting. So right now it's charging at 28.8 volts. Um, the bulk setting minus, um, that has to do with the um, battery temperature. So once I get the battery temperature sensor installed, um, if the battery box is warm it'll take away some of the voltage from the charge so everything appears to be working as it should I've tested the uh, voltage on both the photovoltaic side and the solar side so I think it's time to close this up alright guys there's a completed install pretty simple nice uh, easy going design and I wanted to make sure that I had something that wasn't overly uh, user unfriendly and it had 8 million parameters on it. This is very basic and it just does the job. And uh, from the reviews I read, I heard that these are really robust. So on, this, on the same note, if it does go out, they're only, you know, 150, 160 bucks to get another one. So I think that's going to be it for this episode, guys. If you uh, like this episode or you learned something from it, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, we'd love to have you as a subscriber on our channel. But other than that, take care guys. We'll catch you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.